Good evening, everybody. How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you appointed and anointed? Are you ready to kick some butt on some devils? Glory. That means it's a good night to die <laughs> to ourselves. Amen. God's on the move. Yes, he's a moving and a grooving. Things are shaking. And we don't want to be a part of the shaking because we are being tested. Everyone say, I'm being tested. <laughs> Hebrews 4, please. Glory. Is that rain outside or our fans got stronger? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let it rain. <clears throat> Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Hebrew 4. And verse 1. Let's speak it together. Everybody there? Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, everyone say rest. Turn to your neighbor and say rest. Alleluia. <laughs> Let us fear lest at any of you seem to have come short of it. Verse 2, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterward had spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience." For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of, of him to whom we must all give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed... Through the heavens, Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need." There is something about this rest. It's there, you know, one of the things the Spirit was bringing to me today was resting in faith. Everyone say, I must rest in faith. So this enter, the, this rest is, to enter into this rest or maintain an ent, a rest in faith. <clears throat> so we are resting in faith. When he exposed this to me, I saw two worlds. And I saw a, a hammock. Connecting two worlds. And one was physical and one was spiritual. 
and we were just, and, and the person was just resting between two worlds, just hanging out, man. But he was resting in faith, because faith is what connects. And so in this, in, in this area where we are resting in faith, it's associated with confidence in God in all things, no matter what's going on. Amen? Confidence in God. There's two things that are required in resting in faith. The first one is to seek, and the second one is to sow. In other words, as you seek his face, you seek him. You are seeking him. You seek him every morning. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and, all and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you, right? And the other thing is to sow. Sowing means worship, sowing in the spirit, sowing the word of God, because what you speak is what you eat. So seek and sow are requirements to put us in a position where we are resting in faith. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> and 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or re reviling for reviling, but on contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a what? Blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, for his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And he will see who will harm you if you, do, if you become followers of what is good. <clears throat> but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are what? Blessed. Do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be what? Ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. In other words, seek peace and pursue it. He said, rest of faith, resting in faith, again, is confidence. That you are positioned in a righteousness of conduct. In other words, because you know that you're pleasing God by your conduct. By those things just alone put you in a resting place of faith. Does everybody get that? Man, you know, there's so many people that they can't hang out in the hammock, man. They flip, and then they fall out. They can't hold on to the area of resting in faith. <clears throat> Fear comes, anxiety comes, all of these things come, these emotional things come, and that hammock spins like a fan. And they get all tied up and twisted up and freaked out and all kinds of things. Again, what does it take? The requirements is to seek and to sow. To seek and to sow. Why? It puts us in a position where we are resting in faith, knowing that why? Because our confidence is fully in Him, not in us. Nothing that we can do. Nothing. No confidence in the flesh. Only confidence in Him. And Colossians 3. Resting in faith. <clears throat> seek and sow. 
That's a requirement. To seek and to sow. In verse 1, let's speak it together. If then you were raised with Christ, do what? Seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is in all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another... Even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body. And be what? And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In other words, maintaining a new man <clears throat> that rests in faith. The new man desires, a new creation in you desires to rest in faith. So we allow the word of God, or what we call the word of promise. Everything of God's word is not only a command, but they're promises. So we're allowing the word of promises to take hold of your heart and of your mind, your thoughts. That puts you in a place of rest because you know that he is faithful to complete what he started. You know that no matter what's going on, that's why the word says feed on his faithfulness. It allows me and you to live a life of resting in faith. Man, just hanging out, knowing that God's got it. As soon as you, you know, let me tell you, it, sitting on, laying on those hammocks isn't the easiest thing all the time, man. If you try to stretch for something, you're, <laughs> every time, no matter which direction. See, that's when you're trying to do something to your own strength. Hello, you're going to flip. <laughs> Hebrews 3. Glory. Hebrews 3 and verse 12. Resting in faith. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our what? Confidence, steadfast to the end. Confidence in what? In God. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it? Not all who came out of Egypt and led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. 
Hmm. So entering the rest in faith is by obedience and confidence in the plan of grace. Remember, grace is the plan of escape. Amen. Obedience is a key to everything, isn't it? It's a, it's a key to success. It's a key to overcome. It's a key to everything. That's why you must be disciplined no matter what's going on. You cannot be led by emotion. Emotion will kill you if you allow it to. It moves people out of position. It make, people make emotional decisions and bring harm. And man, they can't even, they can't even rest in that hammock. It's impossible. And the, again, the two requirements is to seek and to sow. Many people have not reached the level of sowing in the spirit to reap life. That's what the word says. Sow in the spirit, you reap life. Sow in the flesh, you reap what? Corruption. And, there, and the reason for this is because they've sowed in the flesh so long that they've never outrun that reaping. They've not sowed in the spirit long enough so they can outrun, this, outrun the flesh. And every time they react, they become, then they're sown in the flesh again. And, the, and it begins to fill that bank of the flesh and empty the bank of sowing in the spirit. That's why it takes time. That's why when people come into the discipleship house, we have them sow in the spirit. They speak that prayer seven times a day for seven days. Why? Because they must sow. Because what you speak is what you eat. You've got to sow in the spirit. Without sowing in the spirit, you have no access and no victory. So many times when you mention sowing, people think sowing money. Well, that does help. I mean, you know. But it's not about sowing money. That's tithes and offering. Sowing in the spirit is essential for me and you as a believer. That's why we're to sing every word that comes up on this board. You're sowing. Don't hem it. Don't hum it. Sow it. Amen? Because what you sow is what you reap. Praise God. Hebrew 10. And don't let your feelings determine your sowing. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't feel like sowing. That's when the Holy Spirit ought to slap you in the back of the head. Hebrews 10, 32. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by the reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me, and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession of yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your what? Confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him, says the Lord. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So we are going to need endurance. No matter what's happening, no matter what trials or tribulations, what's happening. You know, we are heaven bound. We're no longer attached to this earth, even though we are temporary here. <clears throat> we are in need of what? Endurance. Yes, to battle against the flesh, especially of fear and anxiety or anxiousness. In 1 John chapter 5. Do not cast away your confidence. Your confidence in who? The Lord. You know, one of the things the enemy likes to do is play, play a game of distraction. 
And what he wants to do is, if he can get a, a seed of fear or anything in, he wants to get you out of faith and in the flesh. He wants to remove your confidence from in the Lord into yourself. See, that's why we don't say, I can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because our confidence is constantly in the Lord, nothing else. My confidence is not in anything. Nothing but the Lord. Even if there's something, in it, even if people are sick or whatever and they are on medication or whatever, your confidence is not in that medication. It will kill you. Your confidence is in the Lord no matter what. Why? Because he wants us to be free from everything. Everything, no matter what it is. You know, we all have talents and abilities, but our, our confidence is not in our own talents. They're in him who's given them to us. No matter what, he gets the glory in everything. Why? Because we want to stay in a place of we are resting in faith. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Is there anybody go there? <laughs> Where are we going? First John chapter 5, verse 14. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Now this is the what? Confidence that we have as in who? In him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning, now I want you to understand something. So many times people say, well, if I ask, I should receive. That's what the Bible says. You know, not anybody ever receive everything you ask for? No. Why? Because not all things are according to his timing or his will. You can ask for the same thing over and over and over, but he ain't going to give it to you if it's not according. If he knows it's going to harm you, he's not going to give it to you. So that's where people go and search out their own things and try and answer their own prayers. Amen? Hallelujah. It's amazing to me when people tell me they got blessed with a vehicle. Yeah, they're only, their payment's $3,000 a month. I'm thinking, that's not a blessed vehicle, man. It's cursed. Yes, I got blessed with a vehicle, man. I went out and bought this car. We had a $3,000 a month. Or even a thousand. I don't care if it's $900 a month. I don't care if it's $500 a month. God doesn't want you in debt. If you can't wait for God to give you a car, then you're off the hammock. <laughs> Glory. Confidence in knowing he hears and he what? Sees. Psalm 37. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to tell a lot of people I know. You're then you can tell them, go get the teaching. <laughs> Psalm 37. <laughs> The psalm, the, what's the title? Resting in faith. <clears throat> or off the hammock. No. <laughs> Carolyn, do not put the teaching off the hammock, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> psalm 37 in verse 1. Let's speak it together. Do not fret because of what? Evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways, because of men who bring wicked schemes to pass. 
Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes what? Harm. It only causes harm. But evildoers shall be what? Cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully <laughs> for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I call that rest. Amen. Abundance of peace is rest. Romans 5. Romans 5, verse 1. <clears throat> Everybody there? Anybody there? <laughs> Let's speak it together. Therefore, having been justified by faith, wow, we've been justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perse perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, that's a person that's hanging, living in the hammock. Now, hope does not what? Disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath to him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And, do, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We've been justified. That allows me and you to have position. We've been justified by faith. Forever attached in the heavenlies, right? Again, faith is an area of also confidence in God. No matter what. You have faith, you have confidence in God. No matter what's going on. You, can, you know that no, it, it, it's going to work to the good. No matter what. Why? If you know you're in position. Listen, we live in a world that's messed up. You and I were all born... And screwed up families. Somebody's been messing up somewhere along the line all the way. But thank God, <laughs> Jesus came and rescued us and put us into a new family. We're perfected in him, but we sure ain't perfected in everything here yet. Amen? Everybody's got flaws. We're still burning through it. But it keeps us in a humble state, knowing that we have to rely on him. That's the confidence in resting in faith. It's hammock time. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Philippians 4. another good one. Hammock time. I love it. And I got to thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> In verse 4, Philippians 4, 4. Is everybody there? 
I know you're resting in the hammock. Don't fall asleep on me, all right? Rejoice in the Lord when? When you feel like it. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. In other words, he's with you, that your confidence is in the Lord. <clears throat> but be what? Be anxious for everything. Oh, for nothing. But everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. Prayer requests. Put them to the Lord. Know that he's going to hear. He knows. Man, if you're, if you're resting in faith, you know. His arm is not too short, nor is he deaf. You ain't got to yell to him. Amen. Again, the requirements he's asking is that we seek and sow. Seek and sow. That's so important. And come out of us, you know, self-centeredness. That's why he says, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In Hebrews 11. In verse 1. Now, faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me tell you, faith put that hammock together. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds are framed <clears throat> by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are what? Visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained, he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he did what? He pleased God. He pleased God. See, so faith is also, it's sight beyond the physical. Faith is associated with sight beyond the physical because you're seeing spiritually, not physically anymore. It's connected to the eternal. We are seated in heavenly places. It gives us sight to all things spiritually. That's why some people can't see what you see. Because you're resting in faith. Does everybody get that? Remember, faith is spiritual sight also. We don't rely on what we see. We rely on what he has said to see. That's our confidence in him. <clears throat> in 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse 6, let's speak it. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is genuine. 
You know, there's a lot of people that say that they're walking in faith, but they really don't. And again, I don't believe in blind faith. That means it's blind. That can't be faith. When God tells you to do something, you do it because you heard him. You, you're trusting in him. And let me tell you, when he speaks to you, you see. When he releases something to you, a vision comes. You see it. Then you do it. Amen? If it's not God, then people walk in blind faith. And they've fallen out of the hammock, let me tell you. And blind faith causes a lot of problems because that's called assumption. And it's called a presumptuous sin. <clears throat> James 1. Resting in faith. You know, you got to ask yourself, are you resting in faith? Are you still having your confidence in yourself? Are you resting? Are you leaning more on everything in the world or anything in the world compared to you resting in God? <clears throat> if you're not, then you need to seek and sow more. In verse 1, or, uh, verse 2, I'm sorry. Let's speak it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, <clears throat> knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance or rest. But let patience have its perfect world, work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You know, when you lack nothing, you know what you're doing? Resting, man. Why? Because you know God's going to make a way no matter what. If you have that faith. If you don't, then you're always thriving and striving in the flesh. <laughs> if any of you lacks wisdom, <clears throat> let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith, knowing that it's going to come. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because the devil will steal it. It will never come. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. <clears throat> See, faith does produce endurance and re to rest. In other words, you endure to get to the place of rest, always. No matter what's going on, you're enduring to get to the place of rest. And I'm going to close at Romans 8. Resting in faith. Produces, produces endurance to rest in faith. Romans 8, 28. Glory. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it together. And we now, we know... That what? All things work together for the good to those who love God. Now, if you love God, are you disobedient? No, you're obedient. So a lot of people try to use this scripture, but they're out of order because they're disobedient. And they want to know why things aren't working to the good. It's not going to. <clears throat> for you know that all things work to the good for, to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give all things, give to us all things. 
Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also raised. Who is, who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Hey, man, the Lord's praying on your side, man. You know, we think about that. You got a great intercessor. <laughs> he who is he who condemns. It is Christ who died, right? Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's a place of rest also, knowing that God loves you even when you blow it, no matter what. So many people run from God instead of to God when they blow it and make a mistake. If they would just run to God right away, they wouldn't stay out there so long. But see, the enemy doesn't want that to happen. He wants the person, when people fall or blow it, to have confidence in themselves and to believe that God is angry with them. Amen? God doesn't hate us or anyone. He hates sin, and sin is the powers of darkness. Well, we've got to comprehend that. He's with us, and if God be with us, who can be against us? Oh, get in the hammock, man. Get in the, hammock, in the habit of the hammock. Amen. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed in resting in faith. And Lord, we thank you that you made a hammock for each and every one of us. <laughs> Let us learn how to rest and to not rely on or be confident in any of our emotions or anything according to the flesh or leaning on things of this world. We lean completely on you and trust in you to bring us through as we seek you and sow in the spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.